day everyone, I'm Gemma Fronda, Project Development Officer 2 from the Human Resource Welfare Section. Today I will discuss about grievance machinery in the DSWD. So what is a grievance machinery? It is a process of finding the best way of addressing grievances on express work-related discontentment by the employees but allegedly ignored. In other definition, however, grievance machinery is a committee within the agency created for the early appreciation of a complaint or grievance filed by a dissatisfied employee. Usually, the compositions of the committee are the chairpersons, members who are division chief, and a secretariat from the personnel section, but since the restructuring of the organization has been implemented, the Secretariat is now from the HR Welfare Section. In the Nimaropa region, the grievance officers from the different programs were included as members to ensure that there will be representative from each project and to avoid issues and unfair treatment of the complaint. The committee was named as Regional Grievance Committee or RGC, currently chaired by our Social Welfare Officer 5 and OIC Division Chief of the Protective Services Division, Ms. Resi Franchi. For the functions of the committee, number one is to establish its own internal procedures and mechanism. With the assistance of our attorney for attorney Fiona Conde, the RGC is currently improving its procedure like the issuance of SHOPAS order or memorandum to the complaint employee prior the issuance of sanction and others are part of the mechanism. Number two is to develop and implement activities to prevent grievance such as employee assembly. Through the conduct of regional re general assembly, issues and concerns on inter-office conflict will be avoided or corrected and resolved. Number three, conduct continuing information drive on grievance machinery. So attending with the welfare of the employees such as provision of training on interpersonal relationships, tips on how to be resilient during the crisis, and tips on taking care of their physical health during the pandemic through provision of learning and health hacks or IEC materials are some of the initiatives or activities provided to the employees. Number four, conduct dialogue between and among parties involved. This is to ensure that both sides, both the complainant and complaint employee sides are being heard. Number five, conduct an investigation and hearing and render a decision on grievance. This is being done through telephone or personal validation by the grievance officer or in some cases, a fact-finding team or committee is being formed. Once the validation report was signed and was approved and received by the secretariat, the grievance will be scheduled for deliberations by the committee for decision. Number six, direct documentation of the grievance. This is in the form of the minutes of the meeting and board resolution that is being prepared after the deliberation of the grievance and decision has been made by the committee. Number seven, issue certification on the final action on the grievance. This is a notice of memorandum issued to the complaint employee once the decision by the committee is available and minutes of the meeting or resolution was approved. Number eight, submit reports to the Civil Service Commission Regional Office. The objectives of the grievance machinery is to create conducive work atmosphere towards good and harmonious relationship between and among management officials and employees to help promote organizational harmony and productivity. Next is to settle grievances or resolve conflict and to capacitate supervisors on how to properly and effectively handle grievances. For this scope, grievance machinery applies to all career and non-career officials and employees, so meaning officials and employees holding permanent, casual, and contractual positions in the department are covered in this mechanism. Meanwhile, for the basic policies of the grievance machinery is to, number one, resolve at lowest level work-related conflict between and among employees must be resolved within the supervisor's level, unit, section, office, or division. Number two is immediate action or response should be done by the concerned office, unit, section, or division on a given timeline. 
Number three, grievance must be in writing. Verbal complaints are not considered grievance unless it was documented and submitted to the Regional Grievance Committee. Issues and concerns that are considered grievance or subject to grievance machineries are non-implementations of terms of employment such as working hours or compensation agreed in the employment contract or appointment. Next is non-implementation of HR procedures. So examples, the qualifications of terms of reference of required position that were not followed during the, during the hiring process. Next is inadequate physical working condition, such as uncomfortable or absence of ventilations or equipments in the working areas. Next is the interpersonal or interorganizational relations, conflict with the team, abuse of power and other issues that affects organizational harmony and productivity. There are also exempted from grievance machinery. These are disciplinary cases, sexual harassment cases, union-related cases, and protest on appointment. As these issues will be under the care of the Anti-Graft and Commission, Top Management, and the Civil Service Commission. For the grievance machinery procedure, employees' grievances or discontent involving exercise of privileges and personal movement shall be first resolved by the office, bureau, or service. At the first instance, a grievance shall be presented in writing by the aggrieved party to his or her immediate supervisor, copy furnished the head of office, bureau, or service to identify the merit of the case. The immediate supervisor through the head of office, bureau, or service shall inform a great party for the corresponding action within three working days from the date of presentation, provided, however, that where the object of the grievance is the head of office, bureau, or service, the aggrieved party may bring the grievance to the next higher official who takes proper action within five working days from receipt of the grievance. If the aggrieved party is not satisfied with the decision of the head of office, bureau, or service, or the next higher official, he or she may elevate the matter to the grievance committee within five working days from receipt of the decision. The grievance committee may conduct an investigation and hearing within 10 working days from receipt of the grievance and render a decision within five working days after the investigation, provided, however, that where the object of the grievance is the grievance committee, the aggrieved party may submit the grievance to the top management. If the aggrieved party is not satisfied with the decision of the grievance committee, he or she may elevate his or her grievance within five working days from receipt of the committee to the secretary, who shall make the decision within 10 working days after the receipt of the grievance, provided, however, that where the object of the grievance is member of the EXICOM, the aggrieved party may bring his or grievance directly to the Civil Service Commission Regional Office. That's all for the grievance machinery in the DSWD. Thank you for listening. And I hope my presentation finds you well. Let us continue to work harmoniously as a team towards effective and productive government service. Have a nice day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, oh.